every South poster is looking for all that perfect dashboard. I'll show you the one I use and hopefully you might find some benefit from it. So what you're looking at here is homepage. And now this is the dashboard I use and it's the reason I use it, it's so simple to configure and it just gives me everything I need. Now if we just backtrack up a little bit, what is a dashboard? What is a homepage? What am I talking about? When you start self-hosting and you start creating services and whatnot, sometimes it can be quite troublesome to manage oh what was the directory for there what port was that running on where is this what's the status of that what happens is when you start getting all these configurations a lot of self hosters start looking at dashboards and that's what you're kind of looking at here it's just like a single pane of glass where you can see everything that you've got running or you can quickly access what you've got running and everything like that there's many out there and i, I believe i've covered a few in the past uh, but this one here specifically is homepage and if we just have a quick glance over what I already have running, you can see at the top left, it gives me a nice little view of the resources that have been used and how much free space I have on my server that's currently hosting this. Nice little search browser, so this goes straight to Google if I want to search whatever, so this replaces my homepage on my browser. I have a couple of services configured, uh, so these are already running, and they're not even necessarily running on this server. This is actually talking to another Raspberry Pi that I have set up, and it's the status of that service has been reflected here and it just again it's just that single pane of glass it just makes things so much easier i'll walk you through adding one uh, i'll add portainer to this as well and i'll show you the list of things that are supported and how you know you just configure things and at the bottom here we can see that we just have some bookmarks right and you can configure them as much as you like and it's just these are some ones that i kind of go to uh, i need to add more i haven't really gone around to it yet but this is what i have for now and you can go very bright if you want or leave it nice and dark. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, and you can change the theme down in the bottom left to any sort of color you want. Um, I quite like the blue, so I'll stick with blue. So this is gonna be a really quick video. I just wanna show you the dashboard I use and how we can configure it, where you can get it, and that will be it. So starting off, let's look at the GitHub page. Link will be in the description for this. They've got some beautiful screenshots of how, what you can kind of expect, how you can set things up. And it's all just created via a simple Docker Compose file. So if you're familiar with my other videos, copy, paste, uh, change the path for the uh, config. I'll show you how mine's set up in a second. Uh, so you can make sure you can configure your files that configure the how your dashboard works for your homepage. And this bottom one here, it connects directly to your Docker socket. So this means that any Docker containers that you have running, it should be able to pick them up if you enable that option. And then if you don't want to use Docker Compose and you just want to run that straight command, it gives it to you here. And then there's a node option as well if you want to use node to run all of this. Very easy to set up. Again, link will be in the description for this. The other website that you're going to need uh, to kind of guide you through this is the homepage getting started. Um, this here has a list of everything. It's got the service widgets that you can use, like again, PyHole, speed test tracker if you want to add this. It's got a whole list of things that you can add. The one we're gonna, um, I'm gonna play around with is Portainer. I wanna get this configured on my server, so I'll show you how you can go about doing that. And yeah, this is gonna be your single source of truth for all the information and configuration that you can do for your homepage. So enough of me talking, let's play around with some configuration. So we're on my server here, on the right hand side, I have an SSH connection into my server. So if I do a bit of an LS, this is the directory where I ran that Docker Compose file. Again, if you're not familiar with Docker Compose and that, I kind of explain it in my other video, so I don't really want to go in depth here. I'll probably leave a link in the description that kind of explains Docker and Docker Compose, but that's a main requirement that you're going to need here. So if we just do a quick look into this Docker Compose file, you can see how I have this configured. So you can see that I've left it essentially default, uh, besides I'm saying, hey, look, the configuration file the dot means in this directory there will be a folder called config chuck it all in there please and what that looks like is if we go into change directory into config and have a look in there and we bring up my dashboard well my home page i should call it you can kind of see here it's pretty self-explanatory the bookmarks yaml file is a configuration for your bookmarks down here where my cloudflare my youtube and everything is the docker is where you can configure that docker socket uh, I haven't done any of that configuration on my side. You've got widgets, which is what you can kind of see in this very top left and the search bar. So if we have a look in widgets, you can see that it's doing the resources that's configured and the search. So those are the only two widgets I have, but you can go back onto that, uh, the website where it's got all the services and widgets and see what more you can add if you like. And then the services one is the main one that I'm going to use if I want to add Portainer into my stuff. 
So if I have a look into my services, so this is my services YAML file here. You can see I've already got a couple of services configured. I have my Pi hole and my Nextcloud, and you can kind of, it's pretty self-explanatory for setting this up. So if we go back to the homepage documentation, and let's look at one that I already have configured. So let's go network utilities and Pi hole. So we can see that it's got the widget section here, but everything is kind of based on, you have these additional structures. So you have like your heading, right? So if we go back to my homepage, the heading here is self-hosted, nice and easy. And then these are all the things under it. So I'm saying, hey, look, there's going to be pie hole, which means it's going to make another section for it. And I can define the icon, the reference to the actual location of it, uh, the ping, which is the health check here. Uh, see on the top right where my mouse is going, uh, 458 milliseconds. So, you know, it means it's live. I can add a bit of a description here. And then, then you add the widget block, which is what it showed you before. And that widget is so easy you tell it the type hey look this is where you're going to find it and this is the um since all of my stuff is behind cloudflare zero trust this won't be able to hit that over the public internet uh so i let it access it via locally because i have less restrictions if you uh, on my home network but anything over the public internet has to go via cloudflare so it's got that auth authorization that um the home page won't be able to get through so hence why the local ips here so I'm going to essentially copy this exact same configuration, but to get Portana up and running. So let me quickly add that just to show you um, how that's going to work. And now I need to get a key. So I'm going to generate that key um, and then I'm going to save it. So I'm not going to show you that key, of course, <laughs> but um, this is how I've got it set up. So as soon as I refresh, we'll have a C and we should see our Portana come up. And then we go. We can see that we've got Portana all configured. We can see that I have nine running containers in that environment none are stopped which is good and it's just a nice quick overview that i can see that hey look my containers are running and again that was a very quick kind of configuration i can tidy it up a lot more but i just want to express just how easy it is to configure things on this dashboard and it just wanted to be a quick simple video because i know a lot of people are looking for that dashboard um that's just easy and it just works and it's easy to configure and it's got a lot of options but it's not just bombarded with complexity. And I think that's what this is, it is in terms of uh, simplicity. It's not complicated, it's not you know, hard to understand or configure, super easy. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, also, if you made it this far, I am giving away a Raspberry Pi. I have mentioned it before, but they are out of stock worldwide. But when they do come in stock, I will be using this video to pull the comments out for a winner. So. All you need to do, so I know you've made it this far, comment in the description what you would use a Raspberry Pi for. You do need to be a subscriber for it though, so just hit that subscribe button, leave a comment below what you're going to use a Raspberry Pi for. Doesn't matter where you are in, are in the world, uh, I can send it via Amazon, I can give a whatever, I can sort out a way that you can get the Raspberry Pi. I've sent one before to i think it was all the way to germany and so i can get it sorted for you um so as soon as they're in stock i will come back to this video grab a winner and you will get a raspberry pi i've already done it before you can see that live stream i definitely do it um but yeah i hope you enjoy this video super easy to make um and manage all of this so yeah have a fantastic day it's sunday here so tomorrow will be the start of the week i hope you have a fantastic week and i will see you probably next weekend have a good one Bye-bye.